In this lesson, we're going to talk about the preliminary phase of the ADM. The preliminary phase of the ADM consists of the preparation and initiation activities that are done before you get into the main ADM cycle. It is in this phase that you define what it means by the enterprise. You choose the frameworks that you're going to be using, hopefully including TOGAF. You evaluate your own enterprise maturity and capability and its ability to adjust to change. And you define architecture principles, which will be guiding lights that will drive you as you're making architectural decisions throughout the process. The objectives of this phase are one, determine the architecture capability desired by the organization. So you may be sitting at a point right now where you're just getting started with formal enterprise architecture. Well, in this phase of the ADM, you pick a point in the future in which you want more advanced architecture capability, maybe a larger team, better governance structure, better processes, and so on. The second objective is to establish that architecture capability. Hopefully you have an organization behind you that supports the formal growth of the architecture capability and you're able to go out and make those changes that allow you to establish this desired architecture capability. So the approach, those are the objectives and now let's talk about how we're going to get to that. First, we have to define what it means by the enterprise and we'll get into that when we get into the steps identify the drivers for change and the key business elements that are getting you into this in the first place. In most organizations, you don't just start an architecture project on a whim. Usually there's something that happens that says we need to make the following five changes because of A, B, and C, and we might, might as well do this properly. Let's get into a formal architecture framework. And so there are drivers that people are expecting at the end of the process that your solution will be able to solve these problems that have already been identified before you're even starting the process. Defining the requirements for architecture work. And so the architecture work is a project beyond the creation of software and the design of your business processes, the actual architecture work is can be considered a project and treated like a project with timelines and budgets and this requirements for architecture work is the requirements that go into your architecture work. Defining the architecture principles. These are extremely important. Having these principles allow you to make decisions later on down the process that are unambiguous and actually makes your life a lot easier. It may be hard to come up with some of these principles and say this is what we want to do and it will be difficult for us to do it against our principles. But once you made those decisions, the rest becomes easier. Defining the frameworks to be used. Again, TOGAF should be part of that, but you may have other frameworks like Zachman and others that you may want to incorporate. Defining the relationship between management frameworks. Within your organization are going to be a number of operational frameworks. Your, your computer and IT team might have an operations framework. Your project management team might have a project management framework. Business team might have a business framework. And this is your architecture framework. And evaluating your enterprise architecture maturity. The inputs. We're going to skim through this. The inputs are some of the least important aspects of the TOGAF exam. So you've got the TOGAF spec, the other frameworks, any board strategies or business plans and other things, any other major frameworks operating in the business. We just talked about project management frameworks like Scrum, the architecture capability, partnership and contract agreements. You may be into agreements with companies like Microsoft and IBM and others to do development work or to host your sites and those might constrain you and you may not have the ability to do the kinds of changes you need to do. So these are the steps. These are what is important in this phase. Step one is to scope the enterprise organizations impacted. As an architect or an architecture group, you have a domain of which you operate. Now, maybe you're only operating within a single department underneath a larger department within that organization. And so you're, that's the scope of your work. You may, we'll get into this later, but you may end up doing things that do end up impacting other people, but that's more collateral. Okay, your main work are the businesses that are your clients, the applications that are under your purview. 
Okay, that's your that's your organization. Confirm the governance and support frameworks. Governance in TOGAF is extremely important. These are the people that do the checks and balances that log the decisions who's going to have to have some fairness and some transparency, things like that. Define and establish the architecture team. It's very rare that there's just a single architect that just runs an entire company. What you're going to find, especially as you get into larger organizations, is you're going to have a business architect, you're going to have a data architect, you're going to have a technical architect. These are domains of expertise and people cannot be, you know, the absolute top master in all of the domains they need to be. And so an architecture team works together to develop the architecture. Identify and establish the architecture principles. As I said in the objective section, your principles are very important. There's a whole chapter in the TOGA spec to talk about principles. I recommend you go read it and you'll see here things that you're going to be making decisions among those business data application technology domains that will guide you when you're making decisions. Tailor TOGAF. TOGAF is not designed to be just implemented straight off the paper. Every company is going to be a little bit different. Some companies are very large. Some companies are very small. Most companies have different concerns to other companies. One organization might value security above all others. Other organizations may value speed. Other organizations may value taking the time to do it properly. All of these things are slightly different and you can go into TOGAF and adjust it to your needs. For instance, if you do have a very security conscious organization, let's say you work for a bank or a very high secure institution, there are things you need to do along the way to add those security reviews. The security is a totally separate specialization. You need to be baking that in from the start, as you know. So you change TOGAF to match your particular needs. Step six is to implement architecture tools. Now, there are some very expensive tools to manage your architecture uh, framework, to manage your repository, all of your documents go in one place, the workflow and how things get approved and such. Other people just do things in file folders. They use Microsoft Word and they use Visio for diagrams. You, there's a whole wide range of options of how you're going to create this architecture. Then you can start now within the preliminary phase to decide what tools you're going to use to implement this. The outputs. Again, these are these are important. You probably should look at them. There's not going to be a lot of questions on the test about them. The organization model for enterprise architecture. This document describes how your company does architecture. Number two is the tailored framework. We just talked about tailoring TOGAF. That becomes an output of this phase. Number three is the initial Architecture repository, you may have a number of documents, diagrams, lists, and things that can get pulled together and put into a repository. It's also possible that you've done some form of architecture before now, and it just wasn't particularly TOGAF. So get those documents together, organize them. There's TOGAF does have a content meta model, and you can organize them according to the content meta model, according to the enterprise continuum. I'm going to define both of those later in the course. They're separate videos on the content meta model and on enterprise uh, continuum so check those out number four is any restatement to the business principles so as you've gone through this the business principles and goals might be at a very high level might be very vague might be very confusing as an architect you're going to say no we can restate these it means the same thing but it means better it means more to us when we word it like this the request for architecture work so like I said, the architecture project is a project and the requirements for that is a request for architecture work. In, in uh, technology, we have statements, you know, statement of work, SOWs. This is the request for architecture work, very similar. The governance framework, okay? Just like the architecture repository, the governance framework is going to be places where documents are stored, log files, project plans, decisions, your principles, all that stuff goes in there. Well, that's it for the preliminary phase. I do want you to go to the chapter six of the TOGA spec. Link is on screen and just read through it yourself. Skim through it. Hopefully everything that I've said here has made sense and that document becomes a lot easier to read. 
We also have brand new section nine of this course, which goes through all of the steps in much more detail. Hopefully you'll find a lot of value in that. So check that out. Coming up next, we're talking about phase A, the architecture vision phase. So stay tuned for that.